Hi, Blue Streaks, and welcome to this edition of JC Adrenaline. I'm Rachel Veda. I'm Danny Marknow. Let's get started. Team season is off to a fantastic start. With 10 games played in their spring break trip to Clemont, Florida, their current record stands at 8 and 2. After losing the first game 4 to 8 against the College of St. Benedict, the team came back with a six-game win streak. And before heading back to University Heights, the girls ended with a two-game win streak. On the last day in the Sunshine State, the Blue Streaks swept away University of Northwestern and St. Mary's University, making it a good ride home. This was the softball team's best spring break set since 2012. Three years ago, the team started out 9-1 and went on to the program's first ever NCAA Division III championship appearance. The team is already earning individual player awards as well. Rachel Burns was named OAC Pitcher of the Week, and Carly Simic earns OAC Softball Hitter of the Week. Congratulations, ladies. The men's indoor track and field team has had their season come to an end. Success was prevalent throughout the season, especially for one individual who reached the pinnacle of the sport, the national championship. John Carroll was represented by Nick Williams, who competed in the 60-meter hurdles. Williams qualified with a time of 8.16 seconds. He unfortunately failed to reach the final round at the national championship meet. Though, when one event comes to an end, another begins. The outdoor track and field season will start this weekend at the Amy Adams Memorial held at Muskingum University. The women's lacrosse season has kicked off. With just three games played so far, their current record stands at 2-1. The girls debuted their season with a win in their home opener played at our very own Don Shula Stadium with an impressive 20-10 victory over Houghton College. The team lost their second game down in Texas 9-20 against Southwestern University. But the team had a terrific comeback in Illinois with a 13-2 win over Elmhurst College. An individual player award has already been earned so far. Grace Curtolo was named OEC Women's Lacrosse Offensive Player of the Week. The Johns Carroll men's lacrosse season is well underway here in University Heights. The Blue Streaks kicked off their sophomore season with a win in Wisconsin against Concordia University. Leading the Blue Streaks in goals, overall points, as well as penalty minutes is sophomore Declan O'Grady. In the crease, Kyle Lake is averaging 10 saves per game. Head coach Brian Small's team is currently 1-3, but have an opportunity to raise that winning percentage on March 24th right here in University Heights. The Blue Streaks will take on the Britons of Albanian College at 7 p.m. at Don Shula Stadium. Sounds like JCU is having a spectacular spring season so far. Now, let's kick it over to Safita for an update on all things baseball. Thanks, Rachel. Well, the baseball season is back in full swing again. The 2014 OAC champion John Carroll baseball team got off to a bit of a rough start in Florida, but are now on a seven-game winning streak. Let's back up a little, though. On May 10th, John Carroll took home the OAC trophy after beating BW in two games. Next, the team went on to the, o to the NCAA tournament, but was knocked out early after losing two games. Chet Lauer and Jimmy Spagna both received a spot on the All-American team, and Chet Lauer also received All-American first team honors. The guys went on their annual Florida spring training trip and started off by dropping the first games against Alvernia. However, their bad luck would not last for long, even though they would lose again to Northland. The boys would return to University Heights with a 6-3 record. This past weekend, the team traveled to Lexington, Kentucky to take on the Transylvania Pioneers. The team was supposed to play a doubleheader on Saturday, but the weather didn't cooperate and the team ended up only playing one on Saturday. It was worth the wait, however, because the guys would beat Transylvania 7-4 with the win and save going to Mark Matteris. This is the first time the team has won their first game of the season that was not played in Florida since the 2009 season. On Sunday, the Blue Streaks baseball team was at it again, this time being able to play a doubleheader. And once again, the team showed why we belonged on that field and who the better team was. Andrew Doring took the hill for the game one of the set and would, be, and would get the win at the end when the Blue Streaks beat the Pioneers 7-2. In the second game of this doubleheader, the guys ran into a little issue, almost allowing Transylvania to get the university. The guys held their ground, though, and pulled out a win with a score of 10-4. This time, the winning pitcher was Anthony Libertini. 
The guys will travel to Alliance this weekend to play two games against Mount Union, but we'll be home on Sunday when the team takes on Ohio Wesleyan. Hope to see you there. Thanks, Sophia. Now here's Kaylin with a wrap-up of John Carroll Winter Sports. Three members of the JCU wrestling team qualified for the D3 National Meet in Hershey, Pennsylvania this past weekend. These individuals include Dan Meerman, Turner Gott, and Todd Gatish. These three seniors did an extraordinary job at the meet, while Meerman picked up an All-American title for the second season in a row. Gott did not have as an amazing finish to the season, but still did JCU proud. Losing his second and third matches, he did not become an All-American but ended his career with an incredible 108 victories. Gatish had a great first NCAA National Tournament, although he did not become an All-American either. He fought hard in three close matches, winning one of them. The JC wrestling team overall earned second in the region, and two athletes on the team, Sale Carrero and Steven Schmitz, came up with All-American OAC honors. The streaks had a great season all around. Earlier this month, both the Lady and Men Blue Streaks were selected to play in the NCAA Division III tournament this year. The men were selected as one of the 19 in a field of 62. This was the 13th time in JCU's program history and first time since 2010. The men's first game in the tournament took place on March 6th in Wayne, New Jersey at William Pattern University. Fairher had the team high of 14 points, but the Blue Streaks fell at a final score of 101 to 86. The men ended their season with an overall record of 20 and 7. However, there were multiple awards for men this year. Sophomores Doug Caputo and David Lenane were earned all OAC honors, and senior Jake Hollinger earned a spot on the OAC All Tournament team. Back to our Lady Blue Streaks NCAA tournament, they took on Maryville College of Tennessee, but were knocked out of the first round with a score of 66 to 56. But our ladies kept their heads up high, especially with the positivity from their coach, Kelly Morin, who stated in an interview with JCUsports.com, I am proud of the resume we put together these last two years. We are still building towards something, and we will get back to work. This wraps it up for our 2015 basketball season. Looking forward to what our streaks will bring on in the year 2016. Thanks, Caitlin, and congratulations to the men's and women's basketball teams as well as the wrestling teams for the success this past season. That'll do it for us tonight. I'm Danny Markino. And I'm Rachel Veda. Don't forget that D3 week is on April 6th, and it goes all the way through Sunday, April 12th for this year. Events will include a D3 party and a celebration, along with the streak award ceremony, and that will be held on April 9th. Follow at JCU underscore D3 week for all the information and updates. And congratulations to all the teams, and best of luck to all our spring sports this year. Good evening and welcome to a segment here at JC Journal called Venting. I'm with my partner, Jordan Burroughs. I'm Tommy Richmond. Now, this is a segment we, we talk about things that make us mad. Now, now last week we were joined by Jer Jordan Burroughs and, and the week before that him as well. So we're going to bring him back for a third time. There we go, Jordan, baby. Pop us off. What are some things you want to talk about today? Uh, you know, like I just, I'm in three classes. I'm, I do a couple of meetings a day. Uh, I'm here at the TV station. I'm in a fraternity. Oh, but I have to eat, right? And when the calf closes at 8 p.m., I can't get the sufficient nutrients to feed myself. You know, when you have a body like this, it's really hard to feel yourself and uh, get to the calf on time. So I just really wish they'd keep the, the cafeteria open later. Uh, not a lot of dining options here as well. That kind of stinks. Uh, second, I'm going to talk about March Madness, but I know you're going to be talking about the brackets as well. Mm. I'm talking about the emotional toll March Madness has on myself while I'm sitting in class. Today in psychology, you know what I did, Tommy? What did you do, Jordan? I've watched March Madness all day, and you know why? Why? Because I can't. <laughs> I'm venting about this because the emotional toll it takes, when there's upsets, I'm on the edge of my seat in psychology. And today, yes, there was a little outburst, but uh, my teacher understands because March Madness uh, takes a little bit more importance than uh, Psychology 101. What are you going to be talking about today, Tommy Richmond? Well, you know what? Um, I will get to March Madness, but first and foremost, I want to talk about texting etiquette. When people text me and they use, they, they, excuse me, they don't use contractions. So it'll be like this. Hello, I am outside waiting for you. I am here, do not leave. What, what, you could say, I'm here, don't leave. It, listen, this is not English 101, 201, 301, or 402, okay? Just use a contraction, that's all I'm saying. I'm here, don't leave without me, okay? 
Second, and more importantly, we're going to get back to March Madness right now. When people fill out multiple brackets, I understand that if you have the same championship, the same amount of, the same amount of upsets, you have the same exact bracket. But if you have five different uh, brackets and you have five different championships, you are cheating the game and you need to stop. You should, you should not be allowed to fill out a bracket. You shouldn't allowed to own a computer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right Thirdly, on. more importantly, when professors, they give a Scantron test, and it takes them longer than two days to give it back. That's, that's ridiculous. You know what I'm talking about. The econ test. The, 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 the psychology test that Jordan did not pay attention to because he watched Mark Madness. Right on. The, uh, the, the sociology test. Listen, I took a test last week. It was a Scantron test. I still haven't gotten it back. Theoretically speaking, we should get it back three hours later. But because people have lives, I extend it to their 48 hours. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be too upset about that. But two days, come on, professor, doctor, let's go. That's all we got time for with venting. This is my partner Jordan Burroughs. I'm Tommy Richman. We'll see you next time. Welcome to Headlines, a segment featuring myself, Jordan Burroughs, and my good old co-host over here, Tommy Richman. Our segment Headlines revolves around national headlines that spark interest in our viewers. Uh, they may be silly or they may be serious, but we're here to bring you what we know. We will be bringing compelling and dramatic stories to the table to start off. Let's bring you to our first headline. Rapper Drake. We all know Drake, right? Here's a Drake. He released that mixtape. What was it entitled? Uh, if you're reading this, it's too late. And it's too late. The mixtape came out February 13th, just a day before Valentine's Day. Coincidence? I don't know. And it was originally supposed to be an album, but due to his contract restraints, Drake has with Cash Money. He decided to make an improv to album to release this for his real album. If you're this, it's too late. So is Drake a genius, or should he be saving cash money? I'll tell you right now, Drake is a genius. What he did was mind blowing. What he did was something that hasn't been done in a long time. It's beat the record labels, it's beat his bosses. He got out of the contract he's been in since what, 2005, 2006? He's when he, boss. Exactly, he signed with you know Lil Wayne and Young Money, Cash Money a, a long time ago. And it was 2015 now, it's, it's time for him to branch out and be his own guy. Well, what do you think about this? I'm gonna have to agree with everything you said. I mean, being your own boss, that's the goal in life. I wanna be my own boss. You wanna be your own boss? Drake's his own boss. Move on to our next one. What do you got, Tommy? Right, more rap news. We have Big Sean, okay? All right. Now, he released a song entitled Stay Down. He refers to his girlfriend, Ariana Grande. Okay. Who we all love here, obviously. And uh, he makes a reference to their activity under the sheets. Now, is this fair? It's fine? fair. It's totally fair. Uh, it's the way Big Sean con conducts his business, and that's the way the hip hop listeners love it. That's what they love to hear. Let's be honest, Big Sean and Ariana Grande, they, we know what's going on with uh, Big Sean and Ariana Grande under the sheets. Um, it's his business, it's how he makes money. If he wants to make money that way, I, I, that's then so be it. Make money that way. What do you got to say? I, I, I agree with you. That's there just how is. the industry is. Now, you have to you have to release some personal information about yourself sometimes, and that's how Big Sean is a millionaire. Look at Taylor Swift, right? Every song about an ex boyfriend. Genius. Big Sean, genius. Next topic. Next headline Kanye West. We're, uh, we're having a movement against him to ban him from performing at this summer's Glattonbury Music Festival. And uh, so far, this petition has received over 60,000 signatures. Tommy, uh, give me your take on this situation. Would you ban uh, Kanye West for, for uh, performing here? I think Glastonbury should be banned from ever having anybody in the music industry. You don't ban the greatest hip-hop artist of all time. His name's Kanye West. You don't ban him ever, okay? Now, a couple a couple years ago, actually, there's a quote from uh, CBS News. Okay. A guy, his name was Neil Lansdale. Okay? He's a local resident of Norfolk. Got this up okay? here in the brain. Yes, I do. What do you Did got? What do you got? Listen, he said that the Rolling Stones, he, he they actually, uh, they actually uh, you know, they hosted this uh, last year, two years ago, actually, okay. in 2013. They said that the Rolling Stones was the pinnacle. They're up here. Kanye West is down here. That's what he said. I disagree with you, Mr. Lansdale. Don't ever say that again. You should never be allowed to talk in front of a camera ever again. That's all I have to say about that situation. Kanye, he's, he's, the, he's, the, he's one of the best hip-hop performers of all time. Jesus, baby. You know what? For, you know, on all these topics, I'm going to have to agree with you, too. I mean, Kanye West, he's the man. When he rides straight, man, the myth, the legend. And that's all we have for Headlines today. I'm Jordan Burroughs, and there's Tommy Richmond. See you soon.